What is the American dream of family life? Since the early 20th century, in the cultural imagination, young people say goodbye to their parents at age 18 and strike out on their own to create the life they want. I've been on my own for the last 10 years or so. And for me, I thought this is like what being in, you know, a successful adult is. But my wife and I, we started our marriage with $105,000 of student debt. We couldn't afford a house. We couldn't afford childcare. It kind of felt like you either get one or the other. But then my dad actually proposed, we all tried living together. Tay and his wife, Monica, are choosing multi-generational living to fast track their path to financial freedom. But being around family, as we all know, isn't exactly easy. There's a lot of tension points when you're enduring 24 hours of your parents or your in-laws, but at the same time, there's a lot of mutual benefit that comes from this. These are stories of people reimagining the American dream for a new generation. Oh my goodness, all these people. Mikey. Yeah, that's Mikey and brother, and then mm -hmm. that's Peter's sister. Hey, what did you say to Monica when you proposed to her? I have $87,000 in student debt. Will you still marry me? <laughs> you did not say that. <laughs> then that would have reconsidered. Tay and Monica Kim described their wedding as big, unforgettable, but expensive. This was 10 years ago. After the honeymoon, as they settled into their new life together, they wanted to flip their perspective on money. We started our marriage essentially with $105,000 of student debt. And, you know, up until that point, I personally would say didn't have a good money management skills. What we wanted to do as soon as possible was to pay down the debt. But at the same time, you know, like being a young couple, we were also wanting to have children. Tay and Monica found themselves at the crossroads experienced by a lot of new millennial parents. You know, you can have the baby and then you can have, you know, the very expensive childcare, or we can try to pay down this uh, student debt. Our other option is that one of us would have to quit our jobs and then postpone our debt pay down. Home ownership, another goal of the soon to be growing Kim family, seemed entirely out of reach. Home ownership, that's the symbol of the American dream. That was 10 years ago. Today, they have two children, careers they are both committed to. They own a comfortable, accommodating home. Oh, and what about that debt? We were able to pay off our student loans of $105,000 in three and a half years. So, how'd they do it? I'm a 40-year-old guy living with my mom. <laughs> so the initial idea actually came from my dad. When my dad proposed the idea, my initial reaction was like, there's no way, this is, there's no way. I didn't think it was the greatest idea, but it was a workable idea. What made the idea a little bit sweeter was that his father said that Tay and Monica could take ownership of the house. My parents had already put the down payment for this home, but the cost of maintaining the house was expensive for them. So he said, you know, you guys can have the house, just we get to come with the house forever. <laughs> yeah, in perpetuity, yeah. So this is my office and our family room. So this is where me, Monica, and the kids, we normally hang out at. We have our bedroom, master bedroom, where Tay and I uh, sleep, and we have the kids' room over here. For my parents, the nice thing is they have their own little area, they have their own bathroom. It's a distance away from where we're at, and then it feels like they have their own space. This physical distance from where my parents are is very important. To afford a home like this, I think would have taken us at least a decade or more. But having your parents live with you while you raise your own kids can be challenging. Did you have any regrets or second thoughts in that first year? Oh yeah, every day. To be honest, I mean, we've had countless times where we're actually looking at apartments or homes that we were like, all right, like this is not gonna work. Choice has a huge factor in a multi-generational household because for both my parents and I, we could have lived independently, but with more limitations. All the way around. But then when we started living together, it opened up more options. What it came down to was there are trade-offs in order to gain the benefit of living in a multi-generational household. Lack of privacy or constant interruptions, unsolicited advice. My wife Monica, she is the hero of the story, right? Like she's living with my parents. Combining households, while complicated, has an obvious benefit. You have one shared set of costs instead of two. One insurance bill, one phone bill, one utility bill, and everyone contributes to groceries. 
and one of the biggest benefits was that Grandma watched the kids while Tay and Monica both worked. We were able to grow our careers, and that enabled us to maintain our income and then pay off our debt. Hi, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise. In this video, I'm going to break down why multi-generational family may not be for you. I started my blog um, because I realized the power of financial education. I wanted to share that to the world. After having lived with my parents for eight years, there's a lot of ups and downs, but I think I wanted to kind of normalize that this is a way of living. And at the same time, there's a lot of financial benefit that comes from this. While growing out of the needs and values of our current era, new trends in multi-generational and intergenerational living take their inspiration from living arrangements that were not only customary in the United States at the end of the 19th century, but have been common throughout human history across cultures and countries. And that points to a simple truth. The more people seem to customize the American dream, the more the roots of that dream, what people are really after, actually seems to remain the same. My parents immigrated from South Korea to the United States to give my sister and I opportunities that they didn't have. They sacrificed a lot in our youth to kind of give us the American dream. Tay has come to realize through this experience that the American dream is subjective. It varies from person to person. Monica and I, the way we define the American dream is the, the freedom and the flexibility to be able to pursue our version of what dream is. And for some people, like living with your parents at the age of 40 may not be the dream. But then for us, I think for me, like this gives me an opportunity to kind of give back to my parents and be able to take care of, you know, my parents who gave me so much as I was growing up. So that was, uh, that was almost 10 years ago and uh, we're still here. <laughs>